six, seven, three, four. Nope, that's not part of a phone number. So check this out. Me and Cupcake, we're, we're riding in a truck and she says to me one day, I didn't realize how slow you are. And all I could think was, I told you so. I've been telling her for years. She thinks just because I make snap decisions that I'm some sort of quick start. You ever hear of the Colby assessment? Have you ever taken one? If you've never heard of it, it's the simplest way I know how to explain it is that it tells you what you were like when you are in achievement mode. So let's say you're an Olympic runner getting ready to compete for the gold in the Summer Olympics. There are three parts to your race. The start, the running, and the finish. Your Colby score is based on your performance in the middle. When you're running, that's your achievement mode. When you're striving to get what you want. I took one a couple years ago when I started Strategic Coach, and I've been obsessed with it ever since. I made everybody on my team take one, and I even get my clients to take them too. Yeah, and I even had Cupcake take one before she joined the team at the podcast factory. In fact, that's how we came up with her title in the company. She's the CEO, Chief Experience Officer. But that's a story for another day. Anyways, my Colby score is 6, 7, 3, 4, which translates to this. 6 on the fact finder. The way I learn best is by explaining things. That's one of the reasons why I'm recording this show for you. So I can learn by explaining. When I share my thoughts, when I share my ideas, it helps me understand them on a deeper level. Seven, on the follow through. When I create something, I always think about how I can get myself out of the work as quickly as possible. First, I get the result. Then I start building the system that will get me that result over and over and over again. Now, I have a three in the quick start. And now this is where Cupcake was confused about how I roll. I am low on the quick start scale. I prefer to take something that is working and stabilize it so it keeps giving me the results I'm looking for. Number four, on the implementer. Once something is up and running, I like to keep it running. And I like to get things up and running with as little friction as possible to make sure it works. While some people visualize, I prefer to build things and see how they work. Okay, back to Cupcake telling me I'm slow. We were talking about a new direction we're taking with the podcast factory. After many years of hiding behind the curtain in Oz, I'm finally stepping out to be the face of our brand. That means doing more interviews, videos, JV's webinars, and my least favorite thing of all, social media. If we're connected and you notice an uptick in my presence online, now you know why. It's all part of the new strategy to leverage the social medias to get more clients. Anyways, Cupcake thought that I could flip some magic switch on the interwebs and I would have people eating out of the palm of my hand overnight. I'm good, but I'm not that good. Yet. So it's taken us longer than expected to get our message and our offer validated, but we got it dialed in. A little while back, I packed up my family and headed to the Caribbean island of Puerto Rico to visit some aunts and uncles and grandma and and all the folks over there. It had been a few years since we'd been there and everyone was dying to meet Huddy. For the first time in years, I left home without a computer. All I had was my iPhone, a Kindle, and Cupcake brought her iPad. We were a little nervous about not being able to work if something came up. Needless to say, our systems and team held everything up while we were away. We didn't even have to think about work at all. It was magical, and we need to do it more often. Anyways, while we were there, I had lots of time to read. My Kindle was loaded with goodies. I decided to dive headfirst into the literary classic by Neil Strauss called The Game, penetrating the secret society of pickup artists. I read this book once before, and I have to tell you, the second time was even better. 
My favorite part about taking time off, and when I say off, I mean real time off. Not that fake internet guru crap you see online with people taking selfies of themselves in the sand with a laptop. Frankly, if you were in the sand with a laptop, you, the skin would melt off of your legs because it'd be too dang hot. Anyways, my favorite part about taking real time off is that my brain disengages from my work. I get to enjoy whatever I'm doing in that moment. I get to be 100% present. The other cool part is while I'm enjoying time off, my subconscious is working on the things that need to be solved in my business. It's like getting extra brain power without any added effort. I told you earlier, I like to get the most out of what I've got. And that's exactly what we're going to do in today's show. I'm going to take you into the underground world of picking up clients. But first, I have some questions I want to ask you. Ponder them for a second and then think your answer. Are you tired of getting the same results over and over again? Have you heard the seven touches principle? Do power and sex motivate you? Are you getting shut down before you make an offer? Do you want a predictable way to get more clients? I'm 100% confident every one of you listening to this answered yes to at least one of these questions, if not all of them. So here's a mind sex that went on one steamy night in Puerto Rico. It was 3.03 a.m. and I woke up hot and bothered. That's when I asked myself, what if I take the ideas from the game and translate them into the business world of getting clients? What would that look like? And that is precisely what I have for your listening pleasure today. We are penetrating the world of picking up clients. It's time to strap on and let's go. The rules of pickup. If you're going to play the game, you got to know the rules. It's no different with the client getting game. You got to follow the rules because they work. Good news is the rules are pretty simple. Number one, a pickup artist doesn't do what everyone else is doing. Number two. The framework for pickups is F-M-A-C. That's find, meet, attract, close. Number three, if you keep doing what you've always done, you'll keep getting the same results. And last but not least, number four, a pickup artist is confident, interesting, decisive, and graceful. Now that you know the rules, let's talk about the basic psychology to help you prepare to get into the client getting game. The most important thing you need to know is pickup is linear. There are a sequence of events that need to happen in order every time to get predictable results. First, you need to capture the imagination, then the heart. The formula is simple. You might want to write this down. Interest plus attraction plus seduction equals hot new clients. The next thing you need to know is that picking up clients is a lot like any kind of performance. You need an opener, routines, and a close that people remember. Plus, you got to make it seem fresh every single time. The The seduction begins. When people think about seduction, they think about being misled or lied to. As if someone was hiding what they really want. When we talk about seduction here, we're talking about magnetically attracting people to you by improving your game. If you've ever struggled to get attention in your market, if you find it hard to stand out, if you find yourself constantly having to explain what you do, if you have a hard time sharing your ideas, pay close attention to this section. The first step in the formula is to find where your targets are hanging out. Once you know where they are, you have a small window of opportunity to get their attention. Here's some equipment to help you get attention. Have you heard about peacocking? In nature, males who want to mate have to get the attention of the fertile females. 
That's why the male peacock is the one with all the colorful feathers. He's trying to get the females to pay attention to him. In the game, the puas, pickup artists, wear crazy top hats, flight goggles, and six-inch platform boots as a form of peacocking at the club. You can take the same idea and apply it online. Your profile picture, images you post, things you say, your point of view can all be a form of peacocking. It's a way of getting attention and breaking the ice. You can see me peacocking in my Facebook Live videos when I'm wearing the official TPF gangsta hat or my TPF get on top t-shirt. People see them, they comment, and we discuss for a moment. I've got my opening. After you've opened, you have to get right into demonstrating higher value. This is where I see tons of marketers fall apart. They confuse giving value with demonstrating value, and it costs them tons of clients. I'll give you an example from my real estate rental business. After someone clicks on my ad, they are taken to my landing page with a BSL. Inside the 10-minute long BSL, I tell people about all the problems with other apartments and how we are totally different than they are. I'm not giving any value in this video, only highlighting their pain points and telling them there is a better option. The entire purpose of the video is to pique their interest and make them want more. I make an offer of a coupon that will save them big bucks when they rent from us. All they have to do is sign up. Signing up is when I give them some real value in the form of the coupon. This is where we go into building rapport. In my rental business, I do this with daily emails. For 10 straight days, I focus one email per day on one problem they have. Rising rents, big deposits, landlords who don't make repairs, annoying neighbors. I hit them from different angles each day and show them how we are different. And the call to action is always the same. Call now to schedule your appointment. Online is a little different. I use PMs to build rapport and I get them talking about the problems they're facing. Then, when I feel like we've made a connection, I offer to get on a call and talk about it in more detail. In both my rental business and my online business, the goal is to get some personal time with the folks I can help. This one-on-one time is where I'm able to zero in on the problem and show them how my solution can help them get past all their sticking points. So back to the framework. Remember, find, meet, attract, and close. We've done find and we've done meet. Let's move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you were getting into that, but what kind of marketer would I be if I didn't make you an offer? So check this out. How would you like to spend more time with your family and less time on your business? Before anyone chooses to do business with you, they need to know one thing. Can I trust you? But building trust can take forever. And I know you don't have that kind of time, but What if there was a way to build trust in minutes instead of years? Would you want it? I know you would. So go grab yourself a copy of my Digital Daddy's Toolkit. Inside, you'll get my top three speed influence tools to make you a trusted expert in any market fast. Go to daddiesworking.com forward slash DDT to grab your copy today. Time to get inside. Now that you've captured their mind, you've got to shift gears and get inside their heart. Just like the dating game in business, people don't make decisions logically. Decisions are made from their hearts. It's your job to get them emotionally invested so they can make the right decision and choose you above everyone else in your market. This is especially important if you've got high ticket offers, 3,000 plus. You're going to have to finesse your way in there. Warning. If you want to kill opportunity quickly, ask too many questions. Interrogation is not seduction. The idea is to give the person you're talking to an opportunity to reveal themselves to you. To be honest, I'm still struggling with this one, so I can't give you too much advice other than practicing this skill is important for the success of your game. I did some quick research online and I couldn't find the source of the seven touches principle. If you know who started this, shoot me an email, jonathan at thepodcastfactory.com with a link. 
In the subject line, write seven touches so I don't ignore you. Anyways, the seven touches principle states that you need to touch your prospect at least seven times before they will buy. This could be any combination of marketing, including an in-person meeting, phone calls, handwritten notes, videos, blog posts, etc. The idea is that person needs to know you, your reputation, your product, your service before they're willing to make a purchase. In the game, they spin this. Mystery, the main character, says a girl needs at least seven hours from meeting you to feeling comfortable enough to hop in the sack with you. The seven hours could be spread out. Meeting at the bar, two hours. Phone call, one hour. Meet for drinks, two hours. Hanging out, two more hours. Then she's finally ready. As the Pua's got more sophisticated, they realized they could speed things up by doing this all in one night. They could pick up the girl at the club, then go on an insta date. How? Simple. They'd say something like, this place is boring. Why don't we get out of here and get a bite to eat? Leaving the club and going to eat was like a second date. After they eat, they'd look for a reason to go back to their place. Like, hey, I got this awesome cat video you gotta see. Before they head to the next stop, the Pua's puts a time constraint on it. Something like, hey, I I want you to check this cat video out, but you can't stay long because I got to get up early tomorrow. Wondering what this has to do with you? Everything, if you have a podcast. Where do people listen to your show? If you ask them, they'll tell you they listen in a car, on their way to work. They listen in the gym. They listen while riding their bike or taking a run. In other words, podcast is your gateway to these insta-dates. People take you with them from one location to another. They feel like they've known you for longer, and this speeds up the process it takes for them to get to know, like, and trust you so they can jump into business with you. So far, we've covered three parts of the framework. Find, meet, and attract. Next is the close. And listen, if you don't have a podcast yet, You're missing out on this golden opportunity to shorten your sales cycle, attract high quality clients, and make selling your high ticket offer easier. I've got some clients with a 10K offer that has been pulling in sales like crazy since they started with me several months ago. In fact, last time I spoke with them, they had closed 25 sales because of their podcast. Do the math. That's an extra 250K. But you ought to know I am very picky about who I work with. If you're a listener of the show, I will give you preference because I know you've been indoctrinated. If you're bringing in at least 25 to 30K per month and you've got a high ticket offer that's converting, I can help you get more of your ideal clients. You can apply to work with me at thepodcastfactory.com forward slash apply. Hopping in the sack. The thing about getting laid is most dudes are too focused on it. They can't think about anything else and it's pretty dang obvious to the girls they're talking to. Once a chick senses that all you want to do is get in her pants, she instantly tunes you out. It's that way with getting clients too. If you need it too badly, people can sense it. If they sense that need, they instantly think you must not be good or you wouldn't be so dang needy. In the game, they talk a lot about the mystery method of pickup. You want to come in under the radar so you don't set off any alarms. You want to get to know your target and let them earn the right to be hit on. Or in your case, as a business person, earn the right to work with you. Confidence is going to be a big part of your pickup game. But you have to remember the best Predators do not sit in the jungle with their claws out and teeth showing, waiting for their prey to jump into their hungry mouth. They approach them quietly. They let them get comfortable. And when the moment is right, they pounce. It's like that with clients too. You got to make them settle in, make them like you, make them trust you. Then you can pounce. Find the problem you can help them with. Agitate the hell out of it and offer them your solution to stop the pain. Remember those clients I told you about earlier, the ones who brought in a quarter of a million bucks with their podcast? How would you like to know their routine for getting more clients with their podcast? That'd be helpful? You think you'd be able to get 
more clients predictably month after month if I showed it to you? Then listen to the next section. The routine. I know you're all excited, but I want to warn you. There's nothing bright, shiny, or new. This is an old routine that has been working for years, even before there was an internet. I learned this routine from the smartest guys in marketing. If you haven't checked out their show yet, just go to thepodcastfactory.com and look under clients. You'll find them there. Find. You can use Facebook and LinkedIn groups if you're doing this online. In the real world, it might be networking events or your local chamber. Meet. Get active in the group and answer questions. Attract. Show them your leadership with good post or thoughtful comment. This is when people will become interested in you. Close. This should be the easiest part, but let's invest a little more time in this. Before we jump into the close, here's something you need to remember. If you want to excel at anything, there will be hurdles and obstacles in your way. You got to be willing to push through the pain, exhaustion, humiliation, and rejection. The reason I say the close is the easy part is because all the other stuff before the close is setting you up for success. But again, but getting all the other stuff right is where you will need plenty of grit. Once you've captured their hearts and their minds, it will be much easier for you to close the deal. Depending on your business, the close could happen in different places. For example, in my rental business, the close happens in person at the office after I've shown the apartment and talk to them for a bit. For the podcast factory, it happens on the phone. I have an application for people who want to work with me. If I like their app, we jump on a call. On the call, I get to know their business, their goals, and then figure out if we'd be a good fit. If we are a good fit, then we talk about what it would look like to work together. If we're not a good fit, I'll tell them and point them in the right direction. The key to closing the deal is simply identifying their biggest pain points and selling to them. The hard part about this is learning when to shut up. One of the biggest mistakes I see salespeople make is talking too much. Grab a piece of paper and write this down. Then post it above your desk so you have it for reference for any future sales calls. First, ask a question. Second, shut up and listen. If you ask a question, and let the person talk without interrupting them, you'll be surprised at how much they'll tell you. They'll share their deepest, darkest secrets if you let them. What you want to do here is have a pen and paper ready to write down everything they are telling you. Every little detail, the words they use, the feelings they're sharing, their hopes, their dreams, their fears, everything. When they're done bearing their soul to you, your job is to take everything they just told you and build a bridge from where they are to where they could be with your help. The bridge is built using their words, their feelings, their pain, and their dreams. Then it makes working with you seem like their idea. The game. The framework for getting new clients is FMAC. Find, meet, attract, and close you got to figure out where your targets are hanging out so you have a chance to meet them where they are. To attract high-quality clients, you'll need to be a smooth operator, come in under the radar, and then pounce when the time is right. Remember, picking up clients is linear. There are a sequence of events that need to happen in order every time to get predictable results. First, you need to capture the imagination, then the heart, then you got to close. There's tons more stuff I wanted to talk about here, but this show has already run long, so that's all we can do for today. And as I'm going through this, I've decided that the best thing to do is, since we touched on podcasting a little bit, and it happens to be my area of expertise, we're going to dive deeper into it. If you've ever thought about podcasting, but you're deathly afraid of being boring or alienating your listeners, then next week's show is for you. I'll see you then. Daddy's out. 
This is the podcastfactory.com.